Would you be really thankful right now to have four nonprofit year-end emails to learn from? Responses and remarks from an absolute expert to go by? I bet you would. I bet you'd be really four times thankful. Oh boy, I know you're busy today. This is Joy Olson, Blockbuster Fundraising, with your daily tips going counting down to your fundraising success in 2016. Whoa, we are so busy today. We have got only 39 days left of 2016 fundraising. We have only seven days left to Giving Tuesday, which a lot of us are going to be using as our big annual fundraising kickoff. We're barely going to have time to walk the dogs today because tomorrow is Thanksgiving and we got to cook. Oh no, got to walk those dogs. Ooh, I have a great gift for you today, a pre-Thanksgiving gift. Four emails, four actual emails to learn from from an expert. And she's at the storytellingnonprofit.com. You're going to love that resource. She's terrific. Her name is Vanessa Chase Lockshin, and she is great. I first started learning from her myself in 2013, and she is a, an impeccable resource. Okay, the first nonprofit year-end email to learn from is a thank you email. And she says that the lesson learned from an email like this is in a season full of solicitations, a thank you email like this really shines. It's short, thoughtful, and demonstrates great accountability. And the video adds a lot to it. So the lesson to learn from this email is that we can all stand to mix it up. We don't always have to be asking this time of year. Instead, we can add value to our donors' lives by showing them what they've helped make possible, their impact. So add that into the mix. One of your year-end emails is simply a thank you email. No ask involved. Perfect. All right, second email to learn from. And this is perfect in a lot of ways because you can use this email as a series of three. That's what this organization did. And also look at that first sentence, a gift, an additional gift. And there are lots of good links in this email. So they don't wait till the last paragraph to include a call to action. If you like this idea of an email being the first in an arc of three, you can use your little uh, paste sticky note and then each email cross off a couple of the to-do things. So it, 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 it's clever. And, but the highlighting here that uh, we really want to go to school on is that they don't wait till the last paragraph to include a call to action. It's right there at the end of the first paragraph, and there are also three additional links to the donate page on the website towards the end of the email. And something additional that I like is each link has a little bit different call to action. First one is if you'd like to make an additional gift. One of them is if you need to make a gift right now for uh, taxes. So it, it, it's very good in a lot of ways. I would certainly add a, a PS in here. But anyhow, it's a great email to learn from. Here's another example of a year-end email. And we all know, we all know now that you don't want to start your email with dear friend. You, you really want to personalize it. So be sure that you learn that from this email. And if you're going to try to capitalize on people's generosity during the holiday season, you have to at least make an effort to personalize your email for the season. For example, rather than just being general information about Kit's Neighborhood House, it could have said something about the special programs they run during the holidays. So, so certainly stick to your holiday theme. This particular email 
I mean, not only is it not personalized and it's not holiday thematic, it really doesn't have an, an individual character, person, or situation that you can help by donating right now. It uh, doesn't seem to have any sense of urgency. So don't use this as your holiday year end email example. Here's a fourth and great example. The email subject line is urgent, making make coming home possible. That's very good. And uh, she says that the lessons learned from this particular email are, th- are these. The sentimental value is right on target. For anyone who's ever had a family member or loved one in the hospital, they can emotionally identify with the message of this appeal. So remember that you want to emotionally identify the message of the appeal with your donors. Big lesson there. What she doesn't like about this really is she feels that the, uh, the, the calls to action are somewhat pushy above the fold. And she says there's, there's three of them above the fold in total. Plus, highlighting them in red makes it all the more obvious this, that this email is just about asking for money. So the lesson to be learned is that while making the ask is important, don't overdo it. You want to make them feel important, not that they're only important if they donate now. Well, this is Joy Olson of Blockbuster Fundraising saying, I hope you're going to have a wonderful Thanksgiving uh, tomorrow. And I know that you're so thankful for your family and you're probably very thankful for your nonprofit and all the good work it's doing. And we hope that we can assist you in doing even better work and surpassing all your 2016 fundraising goals. I'm looking forward to tomorrow uh, to giving you five tips for telling a better story in your next email appeal. And this once again comes from the nonprofit storytelling.com. So it's a great resource. Have a great day. Happy cooking and happy Thanksgiving. Bye-bye.